Well, apparently the people want to hear of Boxcar Joe, the magic hobo. The saga begins where most of my tales of what the fuck just happened did. Dark heresy. Back when I didn't know how the rules worked. Actually, I still don't. On purpose. Back then I cared. I was shown a random character generator for the system. What I ended up with was a guy who had only two real talents. Playing his bass guitar and running. He was mostly broke. Only owning clothes on his back, his bass guitar and a couch that was in remarkably good shape. He was a psyker. One of the really weak ones. So weak it was actually impossible to tell in character if he was. He had a look that could only be described as business casual if it was slept in for about a week. When he was described to the group, one of my friends remarked, So you're playing some sort of magical hobo? That's where his name came from. The original name that was rolled for was immediately discarded for the moniker of Boxcar Joe the Magic Hobo. If you give me a minute, I'll start typing up shit that happened. First mission for the Inquisitor. I wasn't in the grip yet. They landed in the hive where I was living to investigate some sort of disappearance from an associate. Boxcar Joe was trying to remember where he put his bottle of Sacra. They met up with some local arbiters, got some leads and went hunting. Boxcar Joe played his bass. With a rhythm so perfect it created an impromptu dance party in the lower hive. The acolytes got into a heated firefight just outside the pub where Boxcar Joe was trying to drink his lunch in peace. He stepped out and this is where I became aware of my surroundings. On my left, a tech priest, some sort of imperial assassin, two guardsmen and someone who looked like they just stepped out of a pulp PI novel from the 50s. Trench coat, fedora, whole shebang. On my right, 50 jean stealers, give or take. I grabbed my bottle and chucked it at the Xenos. I won't lie and pretended I remembered all of the numbers, but the bottle hit a hive tyrant that was invisible for some reason. Said hive tyrant had its eyes burned by the pure alcohol. Hive tyrant thrashed into bridge. 30 plus tons of concrete and other building materials fall, killing all but two jean stealers. One is shot by the detective. The other Joe kicks in the face so hard it gets decapitated. I then looked over at the stunned grip. Off-worlders, yeah? You have to watch the local cockroach population. Bastards get real uppity every couple of years. I was then shanghaied into the grip. I'm not going to tell all the Dark Heresy related tales, but he lasted pretty much the entire campaign. Whenever he was directly involved in a confrontation, all roles would go right to either end of the spectrum. Every other role was a critical or a critical fail. In the end, he got sucked into the warp, surfing his couch. That isn't the end of his story. About a month later, I was running a Shadowrun game, fourth of its matters. They were all rolling up characters, and there was one new guy who wasn't there for the Dark Heresy game. He opted for a random creation thing, ended up with a technical pacifist hobo street shaman who lived on a couch in a downtown alleyway. <laughs> he owned a bass guitar, aviator shades that looked slightly too big for him, and his couch was even described as in remarkably good shape. We all joked that two different computers with two different random generators had created Boxcar Joe. After explaining why it was so fucked up to the new guy, he laughed and named his character Boxcar Joe, the magic hobo. The game went along normally for a while, and then the first combat happened. Boxcar Joe grabbed a can of tomato sip, spent a point of edge, grabbed six dice, and let fly at one of the guys trying to mug him. We have a rule when it comes to exploding dice. Every other time the die explodes, the intended effect gets bigger. 27 hits later, all seven thugs, one of whom is hiding around the corner, were dead from the side effects of that thrown can. One gun also discharged into a passing truck, instantly killing the driver with a headshot and bringing the delivery van to a crashing halt into the entrance of the alley. Boxcar Joe starts freaking out because stopping the thugs cost him his dinner. <laughs> Before anyone in the grip could console him, the back door of the delivery van popped open revealing a randomly rolled for cargo, assorted food stuff. The game lasted about six months and in the second of the last session, Boxcar Joe lost control of a spell and got thrown into the magic portal out of reality. After that game, a couple of our players went their separate ways. We played some games with some new guys and then I ran into one of the dudes who left. He had a story to tell about Boxcar Joe. Turns out that she played in a Delta Green game and one of the guys in the group, using some form of random generator, ended up creating Boxcar Joe. Okay. Oh my god, hi really? <laughs> when she met him for the first time in the game, he started laughing about the character, 
saying he sounded like someone from an earlier game, Boxcar Joe, the magic hobo. At this point, according to her telling, the group fell silent. They showed her the sheet, name, Boxcar Joe, the magic hobo. They then informed her that it was a running joke for a couple of local grips, where a musically inclined magic hobo, with a couch in surprisingly good shape, had turned up in more than a few random character generators. Part of the running joke was that Boxcar Joe played Merry Hell with the Dice Gods and the Laws of Probability. So I then asked her to find out when these games happened in relation to ours. After doing some math and a little bit of guesswork, I made an interesting discovery. Firstly, due to combination of the game schedules and campaign lengths, it seems as though Boxcar Joe was not in any two games at once. In parallel running games, yes, but if one game was on a Tuesday and so was another, Something would happen that would amount to Boxcar Joe going away for one session, like the guy being sick. Secondly, every time Boxcar Joe has left the game, he hasn't died, at least not in any way that the body was ever found. Sucked into a portal, thrown off a cliff, Gellerfield failure, etc. Almost certain deaths in every cause, but nobody ever found. Sometimes the game ends, and Boxcar Joe just hitches a ride out of town or something, never to be seen again. As a result, I have a sneaking suspicion that every appearance of the character Boxcar Joe is in fact the same person. As far as my personal theory goes, I have two pieces of evidence in my favour. Every instance of his appearance that I can find involved both random character generators and the laws of probability going right out the window. The implications of the same person appearing in no particular order. Dark Heresy, Rogue Traitor, Shadowrun, Exalted... Old and New World of Darkness, Deadlands, Call of Cthulhu, Delta Green, Don't Rest Your Head, Star Wars, Maid, Six Different GURPS Games, D&D, Feyrun, Ebron, Dark Sun, Spelljammer and at least two different homebrew settings, Fantasy Crafts, Spycraft and about six different homebrew games. Fuck Divino, not sure I want to. A friend of mine once pointed out that if we swapped the couch out for a phone booth, he would bear an uncanny resemblance to the Doctor. <gasps> yes, he would! Yeah, he would. That's what he called. I'd rather not think in that possibility too hard. So what do you guys think of Boxcar Joe the Magic Hobo? I really love the idea of him. Um, I just love Doctor Who, be honest with you, before it turned into SGW cringe. And it's kind of amazing that, like, you know, these random character generators all come up with magical hobos. You know, it's just so unusual, so strange. I, I, I really like the idea, and I like the character. I, w- I would love to give it a go. Um, I'm currently working on... My current character is a troll bard. Uh, he's a lot of fun, but like, I won't talk to you too much about that guy. Um, what I really want to talk to you guys is the big channel updates. Um, thankfully, I am monetized again. I would like to say a big thank you to everyone who subscribed to over the Thread Thrasher, bought models, all that other good stuff. Thank God. I'm so happy to have my job back. Um, I, I actually, I love what I do. Um, I really enjoy the videos. I enjoy the stories. I love the editing process. And, you know, I think I've created an audience of people very similar to me. You know, we're interested in the same things. You know, I'm not a, I'm not by any means um, a YouTube creator. I'm a YouTube curator, I would say. And I think I've gathered people that um, are very similar to me in a weird sense. And I, I don't know, I'm, I'm happy to have you guys. I love it. But like, <laughs> enough of that gushing. Um, what I really want to talk about is the plans of what's to come. So um, I'm pretty positive it was a text speech that got this channel demonetized. It does straight up say vo- uh, synthetic voices are not allowed on YouTube's terms of service. So that is not going to be coming back. Um, I know a lot of you guys love the text speech, but a lot of you guys also hate it and get really bored of it. I think, honestly, this is a good move for the channel overall. Um, we'll see how things go, you know. Um, over the next few weeks, I'm going to be taking it pretty slowly. I'm only going to be uploading four videos a week maximum. And then um, by mid-October, I'm going to get really back into it, trying to be uploading five videos a week, as what I normally do. Um, that's my plan of action anyway. And then over on Thread Thrasher, um, I know a lot of you guys aren't going to be happy with this, um, because that was the text speech channel. But because 
text speech just you like text speech can only be done on youtube unless it's crowd funded you know um unless you've got like you know patreon or subscribe star or something like that um it's just not really feasible to be able to do that amount of videos you know what i mean um if you're just doing like one or two a week yeah that's fine but i don't know i don't know it's it's i know you guys aren't going to be happy with it for most part but um you're gonna enjoy it i think and you know, we've got some really good voice actors. We got Spaghetti. If any of you guys have seen his YouTube channel, definitely go ahead and check that out. His video is going to be up against. It's about the Emperor of Mankind. It's actually pretty cool. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting it uploaded. It'll be coming in the next like day or so. Um, we've got a lot of good, really solid threads. I think you guys are going to love it. Um, but look, as I've been saying, YouTube, text to speech, it just doesn't mix. You know. Um, I wish there was better I could say to you, you know, because, you know, I know a lot of you guys really do love the text speech, but sadly, it has to go. There's no there's no other option at this point. I don't think there'll be any text speech channels left in about a year or so on YouTube. I think it's all going to be moved across to either voices or the people will just abandon the channels altogether. I think there's a very high possibility of that. But look, I think I've rambled enough here, so I've, I really have. Uh, I don't want to keep you too long. Um, I just wanted to try and give you guys an update, and it's kind of hard to compress this amount of information and, uh, you know, a wee 30-second segment at the end. So, look, sorry for wasting your time if you didn't want to know any of this stuff. Uh, I will love you and leave you, and I'll see you in the next video.